Welcome back to Balanced Health. We're talking about the heart and the exciting medical advances being made to keep yours healthy longer. Joining us now is Dr. Lewis McKeever, a prominent cardiologist from Edwards Heart Hospital in Illinois. Welcome, Dr. McKeever. So nice to have you. Thank you, Shirley. It's nice to be here. And I, I have to say, I've heard that Edward Heart Hospital is becoming one of the most best known and with the, one of the best reputations in the whole country. Well, I'm glad to, that uh, you, you've heard that. I've We've heard worked it hard to get it there. I've heard it from several sources, so yeah. anyway. It's amazing what has happened at that facility, <clears throat> and I think the demand for heart care speaks to the, over, the broad spectrum uh, situation of our heart health in this country. Mm -hmm. So let's get started with this, Dr. McKeever. Yeah. The five major risks of heart disease. The five, five major risks of uh, uh, developing coronary disease, because okay. heart disease is more than just coronary disease, okay. but coronary disease is really the major thing that we're talking about in this country, is cigarette smoking, okay. mm -hmm. high blood pressure, okay. high cholesterol, Three. diabetes, Four. and a family history or family genetics. Oh. Okay. So it's actually something uh, uh, that would you were born with kind of a, a right. problem with your heart. So some of the risk factors you can modify you can't change your parents, so right. there's other risk factors that you can't modify. Mm -hmm. And so anything that you can modify, it's important to uh, try to do so. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about cholesterol, which you said is one of the causes. Well, let me ask you, of those five things, when you see, let's talk about a, a, a heart attack patient, somebody with some type of infarction to, to whatever level. I know, and this is not a question you can answer absolutely, but generally speaking, of those five precursors that inc increase your risk for uh, coronary disease, how many will you see them have? Well, generally they'll have uh, two to three. Okay. Um, not necessarily, but, but hmm. uh, frequently. Uh, you know, if somebody has no, none of those risk factors and they present with chest pain, we're immediately suspect that it has nothing to do with the heart. Mm. Mm. It's, it's okay. those, those risk factors are so strong. Okay, huh. Well, you know, it, maybe I'm changing the subject here, but it's interesting uh, to bring out how that women have different symptoms when they actually are having a heart attack, because you mentioned chest pain. Now, men usually have chest pain, but women don't always have chest pain. Is that true? That, that's a great point. Um, w women present in, in different ways than men. Their symptoms are not as obvious. Uh, right. So when me men come in frequently with, with the classic symptoms of crushing chest pain, uh, usually related to exertion initially, and then when you have your heart attack, it's at rest. Mm -hmm. um, women can come in with vague complaints like fatigue, um, you know, just not feeling themselves. And so we have to have a very high index of suspicion mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when we talk to women because even though their symptoms are not quote classic, uh -huh. it is the number one uh, killer. Uh, right, of, and isn't it, isn't sometimes, it doesn't kind of feel like indigestion, like maybe pressure or yes. something like that? Because I actually went to Edward <laughs> Hospital about a year ago because I got up in the middle of the night and had severe indigestion, which I never have, never had any gallbladder problems or anything like that. And then when I got out of bed, my, my legs felt really weighty. And, and so I'm laying there thinking, well, you know, I don't think I have any of those problems, the high cholesterol, the family history, or any of that. But I thought, I'm going to feel pretty dumb if I lay here and have a heart attack, you know, without going and checking it out. So ultimately, there was nothing wrong with me. But Well, you did the right thing. <laughs> but, you know, the Internet is a blessing and a curse. I had just read that a woman presents a heart attack different than a man. So Wakes anyway. up in the middle of the night with indigestion and heavy legs, right? <laughs> yeah, heavy legs. And, you know, I was there. <laughs> You know, we, you I, I often refer to um, the medical profession as Hollywood heart attacks, you know, the ones we see on TV where this happens and people fall to the floor. But statistically, a lot of heart attacks don't actually present that way, do they? That's right. They, they uh, present in very subtle manners. Uh, you know, it's not the indigestion thing. It's very common uh, patients to blow that off, that uh, they, they had something to eat the night before and they, they blame their indigestion on that. and. And, and it, it, it's a deadly mistake because yeah. uh, when you have a heart attack, time is muscle. A heart attack wow. means that the artery it has blocked off and that the portion of muscle that's supplied by that artery is not getting its nutrients. And over the course of about four hours, com permanent damage is done and can't be reversed. So you have this window of opportunity to be treated. Hmm. So the, the sooner you present yourself to the me, to, to the hospital or to, to the medical profession, the you know the, the more likely you are 
to be treated early enough to make a difference. And and you won't have as much damage to your heart, is right. that correct? Well, could, I hate to belabor this point, but what should a woman look for? I mean, if she, what are some symptoms? <clears throat> you know, it, it's a difficult question. Any discomfort above the diaphragm okay. is, is suspect. Okay. Now, generally, because coronary uh, disease is a, is a blockage or gradual blockage uh, of the coronary artery, as you exercise, you outstrip the heart's ab uh, ability to supply enough oxygen to the heart muscle. And so if you have symptoms that come on with exercise oh, and go okay. away at rest, that's more likely to be a heart problem okay. than something well, that, else. That's a good thing to look for. Well, when we talk about these symptoms, um, without making our viewers paranoid, but at the same time making them educated, um, some of the common sense things, like you talked about, well, it could be a vague pain above the, uh, uh, above, you know, the, the abdomen area, um, but a lot of it's common sense, right? I mean, things just feel really strange, right? You're just feeling kind of, I mean, because, you know, dizziness, nausea, sweating, a pounding heart, these are all things that there's some tumultuous thing going on in the body, right? right. That's correct. And, you know, most people know that something's wrong. And uh, because it's the number one killer among men and women, it ought to be foremost in your, in your yes, head when, should, when, when you have a symptom. You should be thinking uh, that. And therefore, you should seek help. Okay, good. Well, coming up in our healthy cooking segment, a healthy chicken dinner that you won't believe is really healthy. And, of course, more with Dr. McKeever, so don't go away. <laughs> 